Hello and welcome to this video for Comp3218 Game Design and Development at the University of Southampton. Today we're going to be looking at some more of uh, Students Coursework 1. My name is Tom Blount, I am one of the lecturers on the course and I am joined by... Uh, Johan Marino, one of the demonstrators. Fantastic. Johan, could you tell us a little bit about what we asked the students to do for this coursework? Uh, well, the first coursework was basically we asked them to make a small game prototype uh, in which they pick a uh, main core dynamic and then they build a tutorial around that. Fantastic. All right, let's have a look at our first game. And this game is Dungeon Rush. Um, so, a uh, nice title screen, a little bit plain, but it's uh, got everything we need on it. Uh, I like that they've included credits for the audio and art as well. That's kind of nice. Uh, start. Uh, so we can start with tutorial or we can skip the tutorial. So, already a nice feature. Start with. Ooh, that's quite loud. Ooh. Let me turn that down a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay, some nice music. It's a little bit loud. How's that? That'll probably do for now. Still loud. Still, okay, probably. just a little bit down. There we go. Uh, okay, so level one, reach the exit to progress. You'll lose when you run out of time. Good. And we've got some arrow keys, so. Let's go towards that ladder. Okay, interesting. For some reason I expected it to be like a sort of um, grid-based game, so it's sort of like go uh, forward once at a time, but no, it's fairly smooth controls. Uh, taking damage will reduce your time, okay? Uh, escape to return to the main menu. So, See how much it reduces our time by. Ah, it Ooh. even... Uh, it even prompts it and say minus two, that's kind of nice. Apples restore lost time. Oh, okay, so time doesn't carry over. Wait, doesn't it? No, I think if I, let me, so we've got 50 seconds, I'm gonna wait here. So we've got 42 seems like a good number, 42. And then yeah, so the time is for the whole, for the whole run, I guess, if you like, uh, not for each level. Yeah. So that's interesting. Okay. So the existence of like these timed sort of spike pits feels kind of interesting when you're against uh, against the clock. So this, although this bit's kind of interesting because here you have the choice of weaving around them or waiting or, for them. So that's kind of nice. Uh, face yeah. blocks move around at random. Okay. Well, it definitely moved before. It seems to have stopped now. But okay, and uh, now we've only got three seconds left. Ah, uh, and that one just blocked me in the entrance. Interesting. Right, let's skip the tutorial this time. Ah, this gives us a difficulty select. So was I not all the way through the tutorial? I'll, I'll put it on easy for a second. Ooh. That started me on spikes. That doesn't seem particularly <laughs> easy. Uh, but we've got three apples that we can pick up. Okay, I guess let's uh, start having a look at the mark scheme. Yeah, okay, so... Um, so first uh, off we're looking at the overall quality. Yeah, so in quality we have the presentation, uh, which consists of information design, graphics and audio. So the audio itself... Yeah, there's a uh, nice noise sort of um, every time the spikes go up, every time we pick up an apple. Um, the background music is nice, if a little bit loud. Yeah, and yeah, there's effects for picking up. So yeah, overall, I, th I think the audio visual is very, very nice. Uh, what about in terms of information design? So we've got the clock, which is very important. We've got, obviously, the sort of the position of the spikes, which is very important. That seems to be done quite clearly. Every time we pick up the um, uh, pick up the apples, we get some feedback, both uh, audibly and the little plus 10 over the clock, which is nice. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, it's very it obvious. Says the level. Yep, it's very obvious where we're meant to be going. Um, yeah, I think overall the information design is pretty good as well. So you would say, yeah, it's consistent and effective. Looks like it. Yeah, definitely. In fact, I would say it's also quite appealing. Yeah, I guess it. Everything is uh, pretty much, uh, you know, a similar. Color similar, tile set, sprite sheet, and all that. 
Yeah, so if we take a look at the at the mark scheme and let's say let's start at a good and see where we go from there. So for the audio first off, uh let's see. A, a good would be complementary audio effects and music. And yeah, I think it's definitely there. So what about yeah. excellent? Uh, excellent is uh, appealing as well. So appealing effects and music that are complementary. And yeah, I think it's probably there. I think maybe there's scope for them to do a couple of extra bits and pieces, like for example, when the timer is running out, like, you know, sort mm. of really emphasize that clock tick um, to sort yeah. of highlight that you've only got a certain amount of time left. Um, this seems a bit of an interesting puzzle. Is there any sound uh, right now when the clock is ticking down? Like, is there a TikTok or...? I don't believe so. Yeah, yeah, th that would be really good if you... When you get hit... Uh, what about when you get hit? Do you have a sound? Uh, there is a small one, yeah. Ah, okay. Uh... So yeah, I, I, I think it probably meets the excellent. I don't know whether it's all the way up into prize-worthy. What do you think? Sophisticated, complementary and appealing. Uh... Yeah, uh, there could be a bit more, as you said, for example, if the timer gets to 20 and it could start ticking louder and louder, so yeah. you know. Or like the music, um, the background music could like adapt and get faster or something like that. But overall, yeah. I think very good. So in terms Just of the like graphics, what are we thinking? Super Mario does it. Yeah, exactly. Super Mario Maker. <laughs> so the graphics... I mean, they are consistent, and they seem quite effective. Like, you know, that's a spike, that's a human, you you, you have to get to the ladder. Agreed. Um, okay, so I guess let's, with same with the audio, let's uh, start at, I guess, excellent this time and see, see how we feel about that. So, so that would be... excellent would be consistent, effective, and appealing graphics. And yeah, I think we're there. I'm just going to deviate a little moment because I'm going to raise something that I think is going to come up in a little bit. Some of the, these levels, the design of them and the sort of pacing of them feels a little bit off. Previously um, we had like a very difficult level with lots of spikes. This level is totally bare. Yeah, yeah. Which is, yeah. And I think I know why that's be, why that is, and we'll, yeah, and then here again, another very empty level. So we'll talk about why that is in a minute. Um, but yeah, going back to the graphics, yeah, um, clear, appealing. I think they're quite, uh, they're definitely uh, at that sort of excellent level. So what would what would they have to do to get up to a prize worthy? Uh, consistent, effective, and thematically resonant graphics. Uh, I mean, they kind of are thematically resonant, I think, uh, or I guess it depends what you mean by that. <laughs> yeah, I think they might be reaching towards it. Um, okay. I'm just going to go through the tutorial again and uh, see if I can get it. So yeah, I, th I think they're pr uh, excellent. Maybe, maybe a step above? I'm not sure they fully... Um... Mm, yeah. Yeah, somewhere in between, maybe. Yeah. Okay, so in terms of the information design, sort of how uh, stuff is communicated, again, I, th I think we can probably start by looking at the excellent uh, side of things. Uh, so, all key information is shown clearly. Uh, it's excellent. And it looks like, I mean, pretty much, yeah. Level, time, and everything else, I think, is pretty clearly shown. Yeah, I agree. Although maybe, did the timer get... Uh, again, because this is one of those where you have to keep in mind the clock. Does it get a different color when it was low? I, I don't think so. I don't think so, no. I, so the, the plus and minuses are color-coded, but the timer itself isn't. Ah, yeah, that's m that might be what I've been. Um, yeah, so overall, I think I think the they're showing all the information clearly, not necessarily in a particularly novel way, but what they're doing is yeah, very good, but like excellent. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Um, so on to I guess the mechanics and the gameplay and the meaningful play. 
Yeah, so we have the three sub criteria of mechanics, controls, and bugs. So, uh, where should we start? Let's see. Well, let's uh, start how are the... Yeah, let's start with the controls. And the controls yeah. are. There's like a relatively limited set of controls. It is just the movement, but they control very smoothly. I. Like, yeah. I haven't felt uh, uh, that I'm out of control in any way. I can always get to where I'm going. So, yeah, that seems pretty. Uh, yeah. Pretty good. Uh, it's so just... they are usable, but it, is it a reasonable set? Yeah. Because as you said, it's just left, right, you know, up, down, and that's all the controls there are. Yeah, I agree. So what's the if we start at a good? What's the wording for that on the mark scheme? For good would be a reasonable set of smooth, usable controls. Okay, so if if we say it's not uh, there, so um, what would a satisfactory be? Satisfactory is a reasonable set of usable controls, so it's not smooth. And that's it. It, it is. But, like, there's a limited amount of them, and I guess this is something we're going to talk about when we look at the mechanics themselves as well. Yeah, the the, the pass is few or challenging controls, so it it's kind of few. It's not challenging. Yeah, so I would be inclined to say it's sort of maybe at satisfactory, possibly a step above because they are again, you know, smooth. There's just a limited set of them, and I guess a lot yeah. of the. So, uh, you know, for example, if we had more control over um, the situation at our fingertips, so if, for example, we got to. Uh, maybe a run. Yeah, exactly, or like a dash or something like that, that yeah, co exactly. cost us a certain amount of time but moved us over the spikes or something like that. Or um, a way of pushing back against these um, f face blocks, because one of them showed up in a place that absolutely blocked me in where I was, and I didn't have enough time to get past it. Um, so yeah, something like that. Yeah, okay, uh, so... Uh, bugs? I haven't That's... noticed any bugs. And I'd say this game is, you know, reasonably complex. We've got the yeah. the, the level generation. Um, we've got the the uh, power ups. We've got the spikes. We've got the uh, moving obstacles. Like, there's a reasonable number of things going on here. Yeah. Uh, d so let's see. Uh, game is reasonable complex, but there are infrequent minor bugs. Would you consider the part where one of the blocks was blocking you completely, would that be a bug? I don't think case? it was a bug because it happened both times. I think it was almost a design choice to ah. show you those things moving. It's just because I happened to be at such low time when I got to that level, it ah. kind of uh, yeah, meant I was guaranteed to fail. Hmm. Actually, sort yeah. of going back to the controls just momentarily, it is occasionally difficult to position yourself within like if you have spikes either side of you, it's occasionally ah. difficult to make sure you're perfectly in the middle of them. So almost okay. potentially, yeah, grid-based movement or something would. Uh, well, let's skip the tutorial this time. Let's go for medium. Um, but yeah, I, th I think that's probably um, fine within uh, what we said for the controls. So yeah, the books. Yeah, so excellent would be game is reasonably complex and there are no obvious bugs. I think we're probably there. Like in terms yeah. of in terms of the mechanics and stuff that we like directly interact with, and again we're going to talk about this in a moment. They there's not a lot going on, but I know that because they're like procedurally generating these levels. Like we've not we've not, for example, run into a level that we can't beat. Yeah, yeah. So so yeah, I, th I think we say excellent for that. Yeah, mechanics so wise. Now we are on the mechanics. Uh, so what mechanics are there? So we have the various uh, traps and stuff. Oh, ah, oh, hang on, oh, never mind this then. This is impossible. Okay, so we have come into run into a bug, and it is again down to that procedural level generation. So let, let's revisit that bug score then, because this would be, I guess, infrequent serious bugs. Hmm. Yeah. But it's yeah very infrequent because 
how many how we, many we've played a number you? of levels and it hasn't come up yeah. yet but like, imagine if you were like 70 levels in and uh, <laughs> were about to beat a high score and then you got this yeah okay so huh uh I wonder because if it's good, it, it says game is reasonably complex, which it is, uh, but there are infrequent minor bugs. Uh, in this case, that was an infrequent mi major bug. Yeah, agreed. Uh, so, uh, satisfactory would be reasonably complex, but there are minor bugs. Uh, mm, I wonder. Be it looks like satisfactory, around satisfactory, because pass is game is simple, and there are or there are serious, bu serious bugs. Oh, uh, there's an or. Uh, yeah. So it, taking it as written, it could well be just at a pass because that is a major bug. However, given that we've only seen it in one case. Let, let's say it's happened one in 50 levels so I'm inclined to say it's probably above a pass let's call it a satisfactory yeah. unless we run into it a bunch more yeah uh, so yeah the mechanics themselves uh, what were they so moving around uh, we've got dodging the, the spikes yeah. we've got the spikes we've got the apples uh, and we have the moving blocks to avoid as well. Uh, we also have, I guess, a number of different difficulty levels, and I'm uh, not sure... I think the only difference with that is, though, the amount of time that you start with, because the levels don't seem to be particularly harder. I think the easy levels were just smaller. I, I think they were the tutorial levels. If I think... If I tell you, I'll just uh, uh. I will investigate this. Um, yeah, so what would they need to get a good for mechanics? Uh, for good would be a set of complementary mechanics. I oh, know you were right, we do start with 30 seconds, we just start with a bunch of apples. So effectively, we start with just a number of free levels. Mm, yeah. Okay, so they do have a set of complementary mechanics. They have, you know, avo avoiding, they have the timer, they have the spikes that affect it, they have the power ups that affect it. They, yeah, a set of complementary mechanics. So what would uh, be the next step up? Uh, excellent would be a wide set of complementary mechanics. I don't think they really do have a wide set of things. It is um, yeah. like a relatively simple set of mechanics, but they have used them together uh, quite well. So I, th yeah, I, th exactly. I, think, I think, yeah, we say for this it is good. Yeah, ju just like you said before, if they added, for example, running or dashing uh, or moving the statues that would be another thing that I guess adds to the mechanics uh, so okay so next one is the level design now this one I think they may struggle with particularly in terms of the balance and the pacing the pacing yeah so yeah this would be interesting because you know, as it's procedurally generated, you can easily control the pacing. Like, you can try, but it's not going to be... Well, there are steps you can uh, take. For example, you can have uh, a number of predefined parts of it, which I think we have seen to an extent. So there are certain patterns yeah. within the levels that repeat. And it's sort of up to you as a designer to decide on how difficult that part is or how difficult it is used in combination. And then ideally, you want to you know, have a have a nice smooth sort of difficulty curve as they progress through your levels. However, we've often seen, you know, going from quite a hard level to quite an easy one. Yeah. Hmm. So yeah, that that's hard because in most cases you you could say that tension rises if you start from the easy level. So there is kind mm. of the inherent tension of the timer. Yeah. Al although at the minute my uh, is getting less tense because again we have an easy level with um, uh, where our time actually increases. So you do want yeah. some, some ebbs and flows in the tension graph. Obviously you don't want it to constantly be getting harder. You do want those moments of respite, but it 
it doesn't feel necessarily coher a coherent increase in it. Mm, so, yeah. So, um, uh, where was that? Sorry, was that a good? Uh, so, good would be if it's coherent. Uh, satisfactory extension clearly rises over time. Yeah, see, the thing is, I don't th think it in... it's tricky. Again, there's the inherent sort of pressure of the timer, but in terms of the pacing of the levels, it doesn't really feel like it's getting harder. Yeah. So yeah, what would if you play, let's say, 50 levels, you start getting, or at least it's I also, started noticing, like particularly levels like this, for example, it's. Um, a lot of the levels feel very empty. There's sort of one bit that looks designed, like around the ladder, and here, but the rest of the level just isn't used. Yeah. So, like, all the, these spikes here don't really pose any challenge, and there's no real challenge in getting to the goal. It's just, okay, where do I spawn, and I guess how long is it going to take me to walk there? So, levels mm. like this are a bit more interesting. Do I want to go out of my way to grab an apple? Do I think that will take less than 10 seconds to effectively do. But levels like this, it's just a case of, well, it just depends on where I spawn, how I'm going to get there. So that's the problem. Yeah. I don't think there's necessarily that um, continual build-up of pacing. In that case, what would you say if its tension somewhat rises over time? Uh... Yes. So, f ah, and yeah, another oh. unfortunate game-breaking bug there. That's a shame. I was almost at level 50. Um, so yeah, I would say that because they've deliberately put in those... Um, uh, if you play on easy difficulty, they have some, I guess, either predefined or at least they're choosing from a different set of uh, generated levels that are definitely easier. So I would say it somewhat increases. If you play it on easy yeah. difficulty, it's definitely very, very easy and then somewhat harder. I think once you're in the main game, it doesn't necessarily have that increase that we're looking for, though. Yeah, exactly. So, either in between pass and satisfactory, or mm, just pass. I and... think I would be inclined to say it as a pass, and it is, it's one of the perils of doing procedural level design, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. Well, the next uh, sub criteria goals, risks, and rewards might be interesting. So, there are definitely some goals, risks, and rewards, like for example, that level I just mentioned where it's like, do I want to go out of my way to grab the apple? Yeah, uh, exactly. Equally with um, the spikes, for example, do I stand and wait for them to um, go down, or do I just charge across them because I think that'll save me more time in the long run? So, yeah, I think there are some goals, risks, and rewards. The goals are quite clear. The goal is get to the, get to the ladder. The risks and rewards are pretty clear as well. Um, there's maybe not necessarily a huge amount of them. Uh, again, perhaps down to how they've uh, designed or otherwise generated the levels. But there are definitely moments where that is the case. Yeah. So, so let's again, let's start at a good and see where we go from there. So good would be clear and coherent set of goals, risks, and rewards. And I think it might be be there. There we go. Yeah. Because satisfactory would be just a coherent set. Uh, you know, not clear. And I think it I think it is it's very clear. And it's also yeah, co yeah. it's coherent with the mechanics. The main mechanic is your time is ticking down, all of the goals risk and reward revolve around prolonging that time. So I think I think we can say yeah, yeah it's clear and uh, coherent. Uh, what would they have to do to reach excellent? That's interesting. So, excellent would be clear, coherent, and well balanced set of ghost risk rewards. Yeah, and I think that's the thing. It doesn't quite reach that again for the reasons that we've already talked about. Yeah, exactly. It feels like well balancing a procedural generation is quite a challenge by itself. Uh, so, like, for example, this level is. I would say kind of has some of those nice uh, balance. Like, do I do I want to go around it, and then or uh, charge over and accept the penalty? But we never see these types of levels again. Yeah. So I. That's. Th uh...
Okay, yeah, it looks like you finished the tutorial. Yeah, so I, I guess we put it in um, uh, good. Good, yeah. And what is so, the next thing we're looking at? Tutorial, the tutorial itself. Okay, so again, there's perhaps a somewhat limited set of mechanics for them to tutorialize, but the ones they they do, they do quite well. So they introduce the concept of the timer, they introduce where we need to go, and they introduce the controls. Uh, in fact, I shouldn't have picked that up. I was going to say I'm going to try and die, and then ah, brilliant! I can just quit out. Perfect. Let's let's go through the tutorial again and look at how they teach it. So highlighting the key bits of the UI, um, telling us how to progress, telling us what keys to do. Next level, introducing the spikes, telling us what will happen. Actually, quite nicely done. Uh, increasing the tension again. Same thing that we've seen previously, but again, giving us. Um, another area to showcase our skills and understanding of it. Uh, presenting us with a choice, uh, again sort of um, foreshadowing and informing us of that risk-reward mechanic. So yeah, overall I think the tutorial's pretty good. Yeah, it looks... this boat, we move around, and then get as far as you can. Yeah, okay. Uh, so it looks like it's gradual explanation of gameplay and controls, uh, and it looks like it's fully aligned with play. I would say so. Yeah. So they introduce things sort of within the level. Um, they get you to sort of um, show that you've understood the concepts it, um, before proceeding. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I would. So, let me just see if it's an excellent... Is it also sometimes communicated through level design? The first Maybe. sets... yeah, the actual tutorial levels, I think so. Sort of beyond that, perhaps less? Yeah. But, let's go back again. So, uh, what moments is it communicated through the design of their levels? So I mean, partly here, obviously, where they sort of um, force you to interact with the various obstacles. Uh, here, particularly, where like they don't force you to uh, get the apple, but they sort of present it as a choice uh, yeah. without telling you that. I think that's kind of nice. And again, they sort of show you this block moving before you can have reached it. Uh, and here again, where they sort of block you in to show you them moving before you can progress. So yeah, I think that's communicated through the design of the levels. And that would put it at excellent. Yeah, I don't think the entire thing is communicated through the level design. Obviously they had to um, like use some uh, text to convey that information and that's yeah, fine. Yeah. But yeah, I think it sits probably at an excellent. Yeah, because it's somewhat, uh, sometimes, I mean, sometimes communicated. Not everything, so yeah. Uh, so I guess that leads us to the core dynamic. Cool, so what would you say is the core dynamic of this game? And what have they said uh, it is? So to me it looks like... Uh, I mean... Kinda get to the end, get... Survival maybe, you know... Yeah, I think there's a number of directions it could have gone. I would say survival, because we're... We're always being pushed to get a little bit further yeah. than we managed last time. That whole, uh, that whole thing. Yeah. So they say uh, the core dynamic we chose was survival. Uh, this is reflected in the game through the ticking timer and uh, indicating the player's time left. Uh, as there is no end to the game and no way to win, the player will always eventually lose. Thus, making the game about how long they can survive. Uh, it's uh, happened again. So, yeah, uh, oh. Well, we're certainly guaranteed to lose this one. Um, but yeah, I, th I think that's a fair explanation of um, why it's that core dynamic. And yeah, I think the majority of mechanics they built serve that. I don't remember if this is something that we spoke to them about during the development process, but for example, the fact that the, fact that the spikes reduce your time rather than having like an extra health mechanic, I think really ties into that quite nicely. So again, a, perhaps a limited set of mechanics that support that dynamic, but the ones they have support it really well. Yeah, so let, let's see. So in this case, 
there's a clear core dynamic that is supported by the primary mechanics. That would be good. I think we're, we're solidly there. What, what would it take to reach excellent? So that would need to be an integrated set of mechanics. Hmm. And I think they're partly there. Well, it's yeah, difficult it to say. Is. All of the mechanics they have are integrated with one another and that ticking timer. Except for perhaps the the blocks. The blocks do not seem to serve a huge amount of purpose. They're not. They don't really present a threat. They don't really prevent you from uh, getting there. There's no real, I guess, s mechanical skill needed to avoid them. So perhaps, yeah. with that in mind, they they probably uh, reach a good there. Yeah, yeah. And uh, again, if it was, I guess. Oh, yeah. How would you say they should make the blocks? If it was, like maybe being able to push them. Yeah. Uh, again, sort of like sort of. Um, I think either as you suggested or as I suggested, like a way of sort of dashing or something that perhaps costs you time again, then sort of puts them more at uh, odds. Or again, just designing the levels so that lo those blocks are more of a factor again, either yeah. sort of forcing you to wait for them to move or some way of countering them. But as it is, I guess, like, yeah, here is the only time that they actually pose an obstacle. The rest of the time they don't really get in your way that much is the thing. So it's not that they're a bad mechanic, it's that perhaps the level design doesn't utilize it very well. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's true. So with that in mind, I guess we are... Uh, we have the feedback left. Uh, and let me see now. Uh, we received lots of feedback for our game, both from supervisors, other students on the module, and just friends. Uh, originally, the game was going to be a race to the finish type game, uh, with the player attempting to complete the dungeon within the limited time span using pickups to expand the time span. However, as our supervisor Tom pointed out, these ideas shared many aspects with survival games with resource management. Uh, after hearing this, we decided to commit towards survival and got rid of the game finish to lean more into surviving for as long as possible. I think that, yeah, they've done that really well, the, yeah. that, that feedback, they've taken it really well. I, th I think uh, they certainly could have kept it as Race to the End, but they would have needed to, yeah, sort of perhaps rearrange some of the mechanics to support it, whereas, yeah, the path they've chosen, sort of making it clearly survival, I, I think that's a... Uh, what am I trying to say? It, it is a good approach, and the way they've designed their mechanics definitely support that. Yeah, so next thing is, early in development we decided upon a roguelike theme where the levels are randomly generated. Uh, however, we had some difficulties, and during the supervisor feedback session we were suggested several ideas on how to make the game feel more balanced, consistent, including making sure the player starts at the control control distance from the exit and how many obstacles are put into each level created. Uh, so in response we implemented both ideas with respect to level number and difficulty. Uh, yeah, I, I think that's also fair. Well, okay, so what what have they how have they implemented to address that is the thing, because this is something that we spoke about when we were talking about their level design and balance. Uh, well, I think w the difficulty first, uh, so you can choose the difficulty, uh, you know, okay. easy, medium, or hard, That's true. rather than just starting from random, completely random level. So that is true, but that doesn't uh, affect the procedural generation of their design. So I, I, the, what they've said isn't wrong, so like, <laughs> like we, we have tried to address this, they just haven't told us fully how they've tried to address it. So they, they mentioned something about starting a fixed distance away from the exit. Yeah, it's like, and how many obstacles are put into each level created. But how and why does that help the balance, for example? 
like. Mm. What makes it, and I guess what makes it um, increase? Because, for example, here we've just seen this same pattern of level twice in a row. Ah, uh, yeah. And again. So, although we have this moving block here and these other spikes around, they're kind of inconsequential to most of the level because we just move here and then it's the same pattern as before. Yeah, I see. So, uh -huh. I, I did give them a lot of feedback about the procedural generation of this sort of throughout the dev labs, and it's obvious they have taken steps to address it, but perhaps they haven't articulated exactly what those steps were and what effect they were hoping they would have. Mm, yeah, I mean, there is more, so I will try and read it and see. If, uh, so, we were giving more feedback once we had the first version of our level generation complete. Uh, at the lab session, our supervisor Tom, Tom pointed out that while purely random levels are unique, they can be pretty uninspired. He suggested that within each of our generate levels, we place smaller custom-made levels or parts of a level to make the level feel more unique. Uh, and uh, yeah, I think we can notice how there's like... So yeah, there are definitely certain structures like this one again uh, that repeat. Um... Yeah, and I think that is that's certainly better than just having these spikes and walls randomly scattered throughout the yeah. level. It shows some sort of you know um, attention to design and some thought about how the players can interact with them. Um, perhaps they've not necessarily been able to sort of balance exactly how they're chosen or how they're combined together. But I think mm. that at least is a yeah, as a good piece of feedback that they've uh, taken on board. And I think having that rather than just totally random levels has definitely improved the game. So uh, so if we look at satisfactory on the on the mark game here and just sort of see where we go from there. So satisfactory would be feedback was addressed and the changes have been somewhat success successful. And to me it feels sort of like that's where we are because obviously mm. like we've sort of spoken about the, the uh, balance and design of the levels um, but I think if they hadn't made those changes, then we'd have been a lot harsher about it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so they also, just to finish off the feedback, uh, they also mentioned how they were they gave the first prototype to their friends, and from the feedback of the friends, they uh, saw that they didn't understand necessarily how to the goal. And uh, so they had to include some text around the tutorial to explain better, you know, what you have to do. Okay, so... And stuff like that, yeah. That surprises me, because I think the first level they had where it is just, you know, a corridor and a ladder at the end, I think is actually very clear throughout the level design. But I am glad to hear that they've tested it, um, particularly with, you know, people who um, uh, aren't familiar with the game and have taken that feedback on board as well. So yeah, that's a good yeah. change to have made. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's mostly it. So there's a bit more, but it's mostly about, again, testing and changing small stuff. Okay, so uh, bits of polish that you know have um, been uh, shown up through testing, but don't necessarily affect the core design of the game. Yeah. Okay, cool. So yeah, I, I would be inclined to say this is sort of um, at the, sort of the satisfactory level of feedback, clearly they've made some uh, changes. Um, they've been successful, but not entirely. Um, yeah. I don't know. Do you? What do you think? Yeah, yeah. I think I agree. It's. Uh, I mean, I, I guess it comes down to the difficulty of the game itself, like the development of the game. And even if we said you have to make that, uh, it would be really hard to successfully do it really good. I, yeah. I think, at least. I agree. So, yeah, I, I think it's somewhat successful. There is definitely something done and it's a good job, but it's not the best that it could have been. Yeah. But... Uh, and I think that's... Oh. But yeah, overall, like, yeah, a very playable game. Um, brilliant. All right, shall we move on? Uh, yeah. Okay, and for this game, I am joined by Dave. Uh, this is Missing Musketeers. Hi everyone. So, okay, this looks kind of, it's kind of interesting. Yeah. So, we're in sort of pen. 
Uh, we've got a swirly green thing. And we've got some immediate instructions, so left mouse to click on a thing, which sort of shunts us slightly towards it. Okay. So I, oh, okay. I have played this a little bit before, so I do know what's supposed to happen. The first time I played it, I, I really wasn't sure why I was uh, only moving such a tiny amount. Yeah. But I think that's because this, uh, you can see is sort of spinning around this thing. This is this is the intended movement. Oh, okay. So you spin, r so you click just to just to push sort of yourself just in that direction. nudge right? in this direction. And then the idea is we sort of spin around like this and then yeah. flick over to another one. Yeah. Now what's supposed to happen, I think, as we're spinning around, is that little bar is supposed to go down. Right, okay. And then we can fling ourselves elsewhere. But for yeah. some reason, it only does it when I click on it, um, which unfortunately breaks that nice spinning loop. Got you. So it, it's worth saying that we did have a... We have seen this running, so we, we know what it should look like and how it should behave. Yeah, um, so it's... something's obviously gone on with the submission, or um, we've had to run it in the Unity project as well, which which may may not necessarily help. So, okay, so it's basically a sort of slingshot orbital mechanics-y type game. Yeah. Where you kind of shoot around these things. So there is a second part to that tutorial if we get all of the targets, so which introduces us to these enemies. Okay. Bows, so bow and arrows. Oh, okay. So they shoot at you and you have to sort of try to get to them by but not being hit. Yes, which is why I thought the motion was a little bit odd, because I can't okay, move yeah. very fast and I have to get all the way over here yeah. to this guy. So I think we've got some so, health up here in the top right, which is the Yeah, so you, you were hit a minute ago and you lost 10 health, so... Yeah. I'm still trying to figure out what the iconography around the enemy is. So you've got yellow there. I, so I assumed that was like a timer until he was going to shoot again, but it doesn't also... seem to be. And the, we've also got a blue number up here, which... Yeah. So anyway, let's so, actually. So originally, when I saw it, I thought I thought it might be their health or something, and then that presumably is you doing damage every time round. I guess so, and we're getting points for it. I guess. Ah, so so when the thing was going down, then I thought it was their health, but actually that's just the timer carrying on, and there and the. Okay, and then the blue number was going up. So yes. you're getting points for that. Okay, so this is the the main game, if you like. So this is the endless mode. Okay, and you've got squillions of enemies. So if I... Alright, so you're going... There we so go. So you go around them. Oh, I got 20 points that time. Okay. Well, I had... Okay. You have to... But if they die, then you lose your momentum. So can you can you slingshot? Can that... I can. I seem to be able to slingshot even after they're dead for a little bit. Okay, so I sort of... Oh, that's what sort of bounce off them. Yeah. It's kind of difficult to avoid being hit. Ooh. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. as I'm sort of wildly spinning around, I still tend to get <laughs> yeah. shot a lot. You don't have an awful lot of control at that time, do you? No. And I'm, I'm still, I'm still, like there when you span around the death thing, and here when you go around here, that's that that goes the circle goes down. Yeah. But presumably that's just a that's just a timer to say that's when it activates. Whereas I assumed you were doing damage to them, and it was teaching you that this was how you. How you defeated the targets? If you see what I mean? Yeah. So, so, I, so I thought what was going on is that the, the the menu screen was the first tutorial screen, and I thought that was quite clever. Right? I, I yeah, I still I still think it is. And, it's just. But, but I, I thought what it was doing is saying, look, you know, you you go and circle around one of these things, and then once it's dead, um, you progress. And and you're right, it is still trying to do tutorials, but it's not actually teaching us anything from the game, right? Because there aren't anything where there's a timer that activates when you start circling around something. That only exists on the menu screen, I think. I assume so. So that's a shame, right? So like, it, what should happen here is that instead of the timer, they should be we should be doing damage. And then it would have taught us that that's how you damage enemies. Well, I don't know if it is a timer, because nothing's happening as this ticks down. It might just be that, again, that's another visual bug similar to... Uh... Oh, you yeah. think it could be the, the health? I'm not sure. Yeah. So I quite like the motion. I think it kind of that that works kind of. I'm not sure why we're getting twenty points sometimes. No. And I'm still very perplexed by the by the theme. 
So are those supposed to be hats? Is that what's going I on? I think here? so. Yeah, it's top down. This is my hat. So you're you're the musketeer, but why why are we doing this orbiting mechanics musketeers thing? Uh, that is a very good question. I don't know. I think if I'm remembering uh, the group right that we spoke to sort of during the development sessions, yeah, there may have been some discussions about sort of ricocheting shots off of things and but that might have been a totally different group i don't know <laughs> um so yeah the i i guess should we should we start looking at the mark scheme yeah um so okay so i'm i'm i am a bit perplexed by this game but it seems to have some interesting ideas in it so let's see what happens when we when we go through um okay so uh first up is the presentation so information design graphics and audio um audio seems okay there's a there's a audio track and you've got some sound effects going on yeah we get some uh, some good sort of squishy noises when we get hit by arrows there's a nice little uh, like sort of looping background track like yeah i think the presentation of it's actually really nice little particle effects sort of when we move yeah yeah so that so the graphics then um i mean they're consistent they're they're they're, they're pretty clear. I mean, I think I think we said there's probably some some bugs going on that, that we'll get to that in the information design. Um, so uh, a good would be consistent and effective graphics and complementary audio effects and music. Um, and satisfactory would be consistent graphics and some audio effects and music. Um, I mean, there's there's not a huge huh. effect going on with audio, but it's Yeah, yeah. The the, Sorry, the audio just... fits the theme, but just not the mechanics. I got the. Um... I thought I did quite well that time. Apparently, I got a score of zero. So another okay. small bug, maybe. Um. So. So really, this is about how effective we think the audio and the graphics are. So I think they they are consistent, and they've definitely got some audio effects and music. So that that certainly puts them at the satisfactory level. Yeah. Would you say they're appealing? Are they are they effective and complementary? Um, to know they're, they're they're on their way to being effective. Yeah, I don't think that. Yeah. So the music's maybe, for example, a bit slow for the sort of theme of the game. Like yeah. we, we we sort of get faster and faster as we go, and the music stays relatively sedate. Um, but the actual sort of effects of se of the sound, yeah, like all. I think uh, build towards it quite well, and the, the, the graphics as well. I, th I think it's definitely consistent, but then it's just some oddities. Like there's the little squares on the background, which presumably are there to help us if there's no enemies to orientate ourselves. Yeah, perhaps. I'm yes, I'm. I don't know, but it's 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 just not quite that clear. I'm I'm wondering whether for graphics and audio we should put them sort of halfway between the two. Okay, yeah, that seems pretty you know, reasonable. They're kind of they're kind of getting there, aren't they? Um, so uh, yeah, okay. And then what about the information design? Uh, uh, so what information? So we've got the health. Uh, we've got the health. We, the... Yeah, we've got the points. We've got the um, we've got the circles. I mean, around... We've got this big glowing green ring around ourselves, which I guess is our our effective threat range, if you like. So that's sort of when we'll start. Yeah. Your orbiting colliding thing. with people. Yeah, there we go. Uh, yeah, you've got the numbers that pop up. You've also got the little arrows around the edge showing you where the enemies are. That's quite a nice touch. Yeah, actually, I, I hadn't uh, um, realised so, that first. There seems to be quite a lot to like, but I am still very, very confused about what's actually going on. Um, and I'm just wondering whether, is that simply because there's a bug with the circle effect? Um, yeah. Yeah, I agree. So, okay, it, that aside, what do we think of everything else? Because we'll cover that at a moment in bugs. So, so, so some of the things I, I, I really like the the numbers coming up like this as you're going around them. That's really effective because right? that that's exactly where your focus is. You can see what you're doing. 
Um, the only problem is you, you don't know how much health they've got left. Yeah, I also don't know why I'm getting 20 points for some and why 20 is in blue, but like 30 is still in red. They did mention when we spoke to them that there was something to do with the speed that you were going. Yeah, so I definitely get faster the more of them that I uh, orbit around or sort of kill or and kind of, if, yeah, I, and kind if of I try and keep a consistent them, movement. Yeah. Um, so I assume I'm getting bonus points for that, but... Yeah. Well... So, information design, satisfactory would be most key information is shown, good would be all key information is shown, and excellent would be all key information is shown clearly, right? And I, and I think the problem is, is they've, they've got some bits of this which, which they've done really well, like like the numbers coming up. And then they've got some other slightly odd decisions, like the like the score and the, the health is a bit small, for example. It's colour-coded, which is good. Um, then you've got the circles around the enemy, which isn't working, we think. Um, you've got the arrows around the edge, that's really good. That's effective. So, so I, I think kind of... What we've got is, we've got... I think what we've got is that most key information is shown, and some key information is shown clearly. So that's satisfactory and excellent. It's kind of mixed together. So does that um, average out to a good... Or is it erring towards perhaps the satisfactory just because we're... Yeah. It's not just that not all of the information is shown clear, it's that some of the information that we're being shown we're struggling to interpret. Yes. So I think, yeah, you're right, there are bits of the information design that are excellent, but I think overall some of that lack of clarity maybe brings it down. I think I think you're right. I think I think the fact that we're kind of a little bit lost as to exactly why stuff is happening, and uh, that that's because the that's because the feedback isn't linked properly to the to the, to the events. Um, okay, so I, I agree with you. I think that's probably that's probably the best thing to, to do. Um, okay, so if we if we say satisfactory for that, our next category is meaningful play. So this is um, mechanics, controls, and bugs. Um, so this one's interesting because the the sort of like initial set of controls of just sort of clicking towards the enemies and sort of just very slowly shuffling towards somebody th like firing arrows at me yeah. does not feel great. Like once yeah. I actually sort of start this looping thing, then the movement actually feels quite good. It's almost that kind of um, yeah, uh, like it's really nice. You sort of get into sort of a flow. You sort of chain things, although. To a certain extent, you don't have to because you will just bounce off everyone around you, and because they're spawning yeah. more and more and more, like you end up actually losing a bit of that control because there's arrows flying everywhere, there's enemies everywhere, and you sort of yeah. you can't really sort of. There's not a lot of strategy to the movement. Let's put it. I mean, do, do you do you feel in control? Uh, I do feel in control of it. Like I can say, well, to an extent, when sort of enemies start crowding up together, then I sort of lose control of where I'm going. I can certainly choose where I want to throw myself next though. So for example, let's build up some speed on these and then try and fling myself over here and then back. Yeah. Avoiding those arrows is a problem though, isn't it? Because you've got no way of doing that really. Yeah. It, it's just like a kind of slightly sort of random war of attrition. It's like, I, I'm kind of treating it as how many points can I get before I just inevitably get shot to pieces. That's right, yes. <laughs> which, which, you know, which, might, yeah, which maybe, I think maybe we'll talk about okay. in a minute in the core dynamic kind of thing. Because yeah. maybe that's what they're going for. Um, um, yeah, so the controls, I mean, satisfactory would be a reasonable set of usable controls. And good would be smooth and usable controls. Um, and... Again, it feels more of the satisfactory level. You've got a reasonable set. Well, I mean, have you got a reasonable set? What controls have you got? Um, so, I mean, in terms of actual controls, it's all one button, which is, you know, fine. That's a reasonable set for this. Uh, in terms of what controls that gives me over the avatar, um, yeah. we can sort of... Uh, so, I guess so it's, it's more sort of time-based, right? I, my control is sort of deciding when to... 
But also, just because it's one button doesn't mean you can't have multiple controls in that button, depending on the context that you're in. Yeah, of course. So in, so, in this case, so, I've got... So actually, you, you've, got, you've got two things you can do, really, which is you can sort of hop along the ground, um, like, I don't know, Porthos after a few drinks. <laughs> Or you've got, or you've got the exit thing, right? And that's it. Yeah. Um, so I mean, I don't know. I I would say that 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 there are a, quite a limited set of controls, really. Um, but you are right that to a certain consent, that's constrained by the design they've gone for. Um, but they but they do seem usable. You seem to be doing okay with them. Yeah, um, and you do say that occasionally you get a feeling of sort of flow where you're going from chain to chain to chain, which is presumably what they were going for. Yeah, so again, so. it feels to me that it probably averages out at the satisfactory level, um, which is a reasonable set of usable controls. Yeah, I think that sounds about right to me. Um, I mean, we we kind of touched on uh, a little bit on the mechanics already, but. What we're looking for was a was a kind of a set of mechanics. Um, so what we're what we're looking for for mechanics is is you know how wide is that set? Is it are they complementary? Are they consistent? Right. Um, so what other mechanics you've got? You've uh, got the... So we've got enemies that sort of move and shoot. We've got the obviously the actual sort of player controls. We've got the slingshotting. We've got some system of sort of combos and building up momentum and getting extra points for doing so. Yeah, although, yeah. So we we it's not clear how that's working, but we think that's working. Um, it's kind of like a natural. I mean, I I quite like the way that. I quite like the way that the that the the rule about orbiting and the and and then how to orbit when people are clumped, how that produces these kind of interesting effects. I think that's quite nice that kind of interplay between the two things. Um, but again, I, I still wouldn't say you you've certainly got a wide set, and, and I would say that you're you it's it's again a fairly limited set of mechanics. Um, so are they consistent? It's interesting. In terms of the mechanics, I guess fairly consistent. The the fact that we've got... Hmm, I don't know. I was going to say perhaps mechanically, but thematically. Sort of, it's a bit odd that yeah. we're just flinging ourselves towards this hail of arrows. But no, the fact that we've got sort of hails of arrows while flinging ourselves through it kind of makes it not super mechanically consistent, because no. again, it makes it makes avoiding things very difficult when we've I, got this... I'm trying to think... I'm trying to think what what you would do if you were if you were doing this kind of game. I mean, as you said, forget about the theme for a minute. Just this idea of of circling around enemies to kill them and then having this effect. Like, what extra mechanics would you add in, right? So, presumably, one of the things you'd add in would you might you might add in um, some kind of collectible power up, right? You might add in different types of enemies, that yeah, have like effects. slower projectiles, homing projectiles, that kind of thing. You might. You might even forget about the projectiles, right? You might go for zones in on the background um, that had different effects, right? Um, so yeah, I, I'm not sure the mechanics work a norm. I mean, I, I don't think they're, I don't think they they kind of conflict or anything. Um, they just don't feel like they go together particularly well. Like I, lo so I like. So I, I get. Yeah, I, I really like it as an idea, but you're right. It feels like they yes. have maybe missed some opportunity to do some more interesting things with them. But but that said, I mean, good would be a, co a set of complementary mechanics, and satisfactory is a set of consistent mechanics. Um, and I mean, that, that, you know, it, it uh, pass would be inconsistent mechanics. Um, I don't think it's quite as bad as inconsistent. I think they're just kind of. You know, they're they're here, they're fine, they work together, but they don't necessarily I yeah, I think overall yes. I'd say maybe there's elements of like I say, those inconsistencies of sort of a lack yeah. of control when you're going at high speed around lots of these guys and there's no way of yeah. avoiding the arrows, really. But you're so, right, overall so, the Yeah. So I, th I think there's so again it's it's the same thing as all the, the other the other categories, right? There's some elements which are, are inconsistent, 
and there's elements that are complementary, like like what's happening now, right? That that little momentum there that works really well and creates a nice little dynamic. That's definitely complementary, but the arrows is is kind of is 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 a bit strange. It doesn't quite fit with the with the orbiting stuff. So again, I think it probably averages out at satisfactory. Um, bugs. Um, so we've definitely got a bug. We had that bug in the tutorial. Yes. Right. We think we've got a bug with the yellow circles here. Updates, because they just don't seem to be consistent with anything. Um, so satisfactory. The game is reasonably complex, but there are minor bugs. Pass will be game is simple, or there are serious bugs. It feels more like certainly erring towards serious bugs. Like the, it, the bug prevented us from completing the tutorial fully. And also the, the the one where we can't actually. I think the thing where you don't know how much health the enemies has left. That's that's quite problematic actually, because that's the, essentially your whole strategy is getting that timing. You know, it's that one last swing to kill the enemy and then off you go. Um, so yeah, so I th I think for bugs, I think we have to go for a for a for a pass. I think. Um, okay, so we're talking about level design. Um, so this is the goals, risks, and rewards, and the pacing. Um, so this is an interesting one because the level design, like the level itself, is just a flat open space. There's not a lot of necessarily thought that's gone into designing the physical space that we're traversing. In which case, all of the the design and pacing comes from how the enemies are sort of spawned yeah. in, interspersed, and, and again, they, there's they, a limited they, set of enemies, and they all just seem to show up at once. Well, they do they do gradually appear, but I think that might just be it's hard to tell. But it, I'm looking just, at the triangles around the edge. I think they're just all spawned quite far away, and then and then and then as, as they all zoom in, it gets more and more hectic, and that's it. Um, I mean, you haven't. I don't know what happens if you actually defeat them all. I, I don't think we're going to see that, I'll be honest. <laughs> um, I mean, I'm presuming there's no... Yeah. I th it's, called, it's called Endless Mode as well, so... Yeah. I don't, th I don't think there's going to be an end. I'm trying to look to see if there's any more triangle spawning. It, it's hard to tell. It looks to me there is. I, I'm assuming so it looks there to are. Me that, so it looks to me like they're just spawning off and you're... So I think when you have that, there is a natural progression where... You just get more and more and more and more and more. Um, but of course, it is possible to reach a kind of equilibrium where you're killing them just as fast as they're appearing. Well, so you can also fly right off the screen because <laughs> the, yeah. cam the camera tracks quite slow. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> okay. Um, so yeah, I, I so I, I think the pa the pacing is clearly problematic. Um, so a pass would be tension somewhat rises over time. Poor would be variations in tension but no coherent pattern over time. So I'm, I, I'm, I'm kind of thinking we might be down there. The, yeah, you've got, it's just random according to, um, yeah, kind of according to what the situation with the enemies is. Yeah. So in survival or endless games like this, there kind of is an inherent increasing of tension because as we go on, we're inevitably going to keep losing health. Yes. But there, yeah, there, there isn't sort of a pattern in the way the enemies spawn. There aren't different types of enemies to sort of ramp up the challenge as we go. There's, um, like, and, and it, there's and no it's obstacles not, it's within not, it's the level. Managed. Yeah. So I think the key thing about the poor is there's no coherent pattern, and I think that's what you've got, right? So, so I, I think unfortunately for the pacing, it's kind of down there. What about the goals, risks, and rewards? Uh, okay. So the goal is. Well, is it, yeah. So the, I was going to say, is the goal get to survive? Off, get off the core dynamic in a minute. But, is um, the goal to survive for longer or to to kill as many enemies as possible? And it's definitely to kill you, as many enemies because that's what we get points got, for. You've got a score, right? So yeah. yes, it's to kill as many. So your goal is to try and kill everything. Um, risks and rewards. If I aim for a bigger clump of enemies, I will move faster and score more points, but I'm more likely to get uh, very very damaged. I'm sort of shepherding them all into one lump here, so we'll see how this goes in a minute. Um, if I can make it there. But... So, arguably a risk-reward strategy there. Yeah. 
really have got a clump. Oh, you're getting 100 points. Oh no, you're doing 100 damage. Okay. Um, but other than that, yeah, again, sort of similar to the sort of um, the structure of the level, because there's not that structure or those mechanics, there's inherently a limited set of risks and rewards, I think. Yeah, and again, you're just sort of limited a little, a little bit by by those mechanics. So um, a pass would be a limited set of goals, risks, and rewards, um, and a pour would be incoherent or very limited set of goals, risks, and rewards. Um, yeah, it, it it kind of feels. I'm not sure it's, well, it's... all the way down there. Because, no, like I said, uh, there, there is sort of it, it, in the design there is a strategy of risk versus reward to a degree. Yes. So, so okay, I I think I agree with you. So I I, I was I was I mean, arguing whether it was between the two, but but actually that's a pretty good definition of a limited set of goals, risks, and rewards, which is the which is the um which is the pass level. Um, what about the tutorial? Okay, so despite it being somewhat bugged, I think the tutorial isn't too bad. The issue I have, I guess, the sort of initial movement control feels very odd. Yeah. So, although I like that that's present in the title screen, yeah, it's an odd introduction to it, I think. But the actual sort of introduction to, well, but it, but even here, like you've got the you've got the same the left left mouse button, which is fine, but but there's the left mouse button thing underneath underneath each of those targets. Yeah, it did right. take me a while to realise this sort of slingshot thing was a mechanic that existed. But yeah. again, that might be down to this this bug, because I think if we were orbiting, like we we see this, we left click on it, we orbit it. Yeah. What's supposed to happen is this thing goes green, and then we go, okay, well now I have to left click somewhere else. Yeah. And that's sort of shown to us. I think that's not a terrible way of introducing this as a mechanic. Yeah. So. And then if I quit out. Pass would be gradual explanation of gameplay and controls revealed as you play. Um, and a satisfactory would be a gradual explanation aligned with play. And I, I'm not sure it's aligned with play, just because the modes are so so very different and separate. Um, yep. There's definitely a gradual explanation, so we get the movement controls and the yeah. looping around stuff. Then we're introduced to a lone enemy to try things out. I guess we're guaranteed to get shot once or twice, which introduces us to the health. Yeah. It's got the same sort of yellow thing around yeah. it, even if... It's slightly different to the target, so we go. Yeah. Okay. Um, it, I would I would say that it. I, I was going to say it, it, that that sounds like a pass, but there's a. But you are actually playing as these things are introduced to you. They're not explained to you. Yeah, exactly. Um, they're so so maybe maybe a little bit higher than a pass. Kind of halfway between the two would be appropriate. Um. Okay, core dynamic. Um. So we we've already touched on this a bit, right? Um, There's definitely and two, at, and I think at one point you said in a survival game like this, which kind of well, gives away what you think it is. Well, that's the thing. Then I also said the goal here is clearly destroying as many yes. of these enemies as possible. So there's already two things that are sort of yeah, and and it's a problem, right? So they they've listed it as destruction. Um, orbiting enemies deals damage. You chain together more targets. Your speed and score. Increase, which ensures your pace is kept high. Um, and you know what? If like I, I think they're right. It's of the two. It probably is the focus is more on destruction. Like I don't get points for just running away and living for a long time. I have to get stuck no. in and destroy things. Yeah. Um, so so why is it then that it came across so much as survival? So I would say one of the hallmarks of like a survival game or the survival as a core dynamic is you have a resource that is constantly depleting and you're eventually going to fail. And yeah. with the health, that's pretty much exactly where we are. Like the one again, sort of another hallmark is you know I I want to survive longer than I did last time. I want to get a better score than I did the last time I played, kind of thing. And this kind of endless mode and limited health, yeah, really sort of builds towards that kind of dynamic so so, so what so, mechanics would yeah. they need to sort of really really emphasize that destruction so in a destruction game it's much more about feeling empowered right um i i think that i think the reason you feel disempowered 
was was one of the things you mentioned about, and, and it's linked to your health going down. It's your lack of ability to do anything about being hit by those arrows, right? That you're you're just moving through this swarm of arrows, taking damage constantly, and you your agency is very limited. That's the problem. And I think if you took out the arrows, right, and you did you did something else um, instead. Uh, and, and you know you could do things like uh, you have to chain together enemies of a different you know of, of a different color before you can take out another color or something, right? Sorry. You can do other other things, um, or even just you get like a tiny percentage of health based on your current combo or something, because then yes. you're again sort of emphasizing the destruction aspect of it. Like uh, yeah. games like yeah. Doom, when you're on low health, they they give you mechanical reasons to carry on destroying things. Yes. Um, so, so I think, so again, I think it's it's something that actually arises out of the dynamics of, of the system, um, because the the way they've set it up, like you said, with the score is definitely destruction. Um, so that's interesting, actually, because I mean, satisfactory would be a clear core dynamic that is partially supported by the primary mechanics, right? And a pass would be an attempt at a core dynamic, but not well supported by the primary mechanics. I and I don't think it's definitely not a pass. It's at least at a satisfactory because while while we recognise that there are sort of two dynamics at play here, I think we both agree that it's clear that it's destruction is the one they're aiming for based on yeah the main underlying mechanics of the scores and so on. Yeah. Um, the the reason I'm I'm wondering about the pass is because of the because of the way that those mechanics then interact to create an effect. So so essentially, it, it's because of that. It's because of your constantly depleting health and those arrows, right? Mm. Um, and that you're kind of so to me, they take away from the destruction element in a way that. Is like you say, sort of maybe detrimental yeah, I mean, and disempowering. Yeah, like in a, in a bullet hell shooter, right? Which is also clearly a kind of a destruction game. You know, one of the key things you are doing is trying to avoid being hit, right? And that just seems to be entirely missing from this. Yeah, You've got I mean, no way of managing that. Um, it is possible that I'm just very bad at it, but it definitely feels like <laughs> there's there's like you say a lack of control and agency over when I can. When I get hit, if I get hit, I don't feel like I messed up. I felt like, well, there were seven arrows, and I'm flying around in circles. So, so really, really, that these three, right, poor to pass to satisfactory, here is all about to what extent are the mechanics supporting the dynamic. So, satisfactory, it's partially poor at the other end is that the mechanics detract from it, and satisfactory is that they're kind of they're kind of neutral, right? They're sort of some some of them are supporting it, but some of them aren't really doing anything, you know. Um, yeah, uh, and it feels to me like it's maybe between a pass and a satisfactory. It's kind of okay. Yeah. Um, so that takes us on to the feedback. Um, so what they said for feedback was their initial feedback was that their dynamic was confused. Core dynamic was confused. Split between destruction and survival. All right. So ah. that's what we're talking about. Um, to fix this, uh, oh, there was a timer and a health bar that implied the player should avoid combat. To fix this, we removed the timer and replaced it with a score counter, which made it obvious to the player that the aim is to seek combat. So, so that's that's interesting because that that was basically their saving grace, right, for the core dynamic. That was the one thing that we said. Okay, it's def they're definitely aiming for that. So yes. So um, so another thing they did was reinforce the destruction genre by making the player's movement slow if combat was not sustained. So okay. you can't run away from enemies, and you're forced to attack to I... gain more agility. Um, that's an interesting idea. I don't think it works very well. So I will but... say, I definitely can run away from enemies, because I, I did just try riding off into the sunset. Yeah. But there's no benefit to doing that, is, the th is actually the reason. Like I, I like that they've tied faster movement to more combat. I think actually that does kind of work quite well. Yeah, okay. So you uh, that's interesting. So... Um, I, I'm I'm not so convinced. Um, so I, then I'm not, I'm not the one playing it. So I'll, I will defer to you. So in in so much as as an intention, I think that was a good idea. 
however yeah. like you say with some of the stuff we already talked about like the mechanics of you know the projectiles and having a lack of control that extra movement almost hinders it to a degree but i right. like i like what they were thinking with it so they also said that originally they had multiple controls with different attacks but uh their playtesters felt it confused the mechanics um and they wanted to have more depth with their core movement mechanic so they made combat initiate automatically if you move into range and um, the simplest control we can think of a mouse click sorry just to go um, back to one thing that i've noticed so the these enemies have the yellow circle around that's ticking down they also yeah. have a very very tiny red circle around them and i think the red circle might be their health ah uh, yeah i can see that but does that go down as they it does oh it does i can't see that it yeah it's very like i'm having to lean right up to my screen to be able to see it but i think that's the intention right okay yeah all right so yeah it, it's present but very very unclear so i think okay. what we said previously still stands but just wanted to mention it but, yeah because they're, they're going to be sat watching the video screaming at the screen right saying but we did do that um, okay, so um, thinking about their feedback then, I, I think their initial response to the core dynamic comments um, were good. I, I think they've been sort of partially successful with that, but not wholly successful. Um, and then but some of the later things they said, like reinforcing the destruction genre by making the by movement slow and forcing you to attack. Um, See, I... yeah. Like a lot of other things we've talked about in this game, I think they're they're all they're caught between the the top end and the bottom end of the mark scheme in some ways. The like I really like the fact that they sort of took that, they interpreted it, and they sort of thought about yeah. that as a mechanic. It's unfortunate that, like you say, it's not necessarily yeah done the thing that they were hoping it would. I mean, the 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 category for satisfactory is feedback was addressed and the changes have been somewhat successful. And it, and it kind of feels like that, right? I think if they'd had lots of different ways of attacking, right, um, and they'd had a timer, uh, it, I mean, that would have just confused it no end. Um, yeah, I, I, I think their mistake was in, that they, they, had, they had some mechanics that were inappropriate, um, and what they should have done is replace them with some other mechanics that were more appropriate. But what they actually did was just pull them out. I think... Yeah, you've hit the nail on the head um, there. So, so I mean, I know they, they did say they added a few bits, like they, they you know they added the the kind of moving into to attack through movement, but yeah, but uh, but I I still think it's satisfactory. I still think they've articulated, you know, they they they've, they've articulated the feedback, they've addressed it, and they've been somewhat successful. Yeah, um, agreed. So I think I think that's I think that's okay. Okay. Yeah. So that is uh, the last bit of the mark scheme. Um, and I think that means that's uh, our last our last game for this batch. I think it is. Yeah. So we'll see you in the next video. All right. Bye bye.